And as you can see today, I've been working indoors because out in the garage is a bit dim and a bit gloomy and uh, it's a lot easier to work indoors when I'm just doing electrics like this. Also, what you might notice is I've invested in a new multimeter. Uh, this is fully electronic and surprisingly enough, it only cost 12 quid. So I can't argue with that and I find it very, very helpful. Oops, sorry about that. We've got here the cheap and cheerful instrument switch gear and I wasn't quite sure which wires did what because it didn't come with any instructions. So by clicking on something like this and then using the other side, I can then check to see which switch does what and which wire does what, which is what I've been working on today. Um, now, I've had a problem with these switches because they make no sense whatsoever. Um, this in two halves, left and right, with a multi-pin plug, so you would think that would go in there, and all's well, just a few wires then to sort out. But as I checked it, it makes no sense at all because some of these wires shouldn't really go together. And in fact, what I've done, and what I've been doing today is having worked out which wires do what is strip them all down and fit new multi-pin plugs. But we are getting there slowly, so let's go and see what I've been up to recently. And now we're back in the garage because I've got to remove this bracket which holds the idiot lights and the speedo from the bike because it makes life a lot easier when we come to wiring up the wires at the back and adding new connectors and so on. So let's get this back in the house and we can carry on with the work there. And so here we are back indoors and I was about to start adding some multi-pin connectors to these rather narrow and small wires which operate the idiot lights. But sadly it seems a bit too delicate because on the back here I've already had one fall off. Um, and in fact there's one or two already gone missing and they're just so badly made and so delicate that there's no way they'll survive action on a motorbike. So sadly they can't stay, they'll have to go. Which leaves me in a bit of a dilemma because um, because now I've got to decide, do I try and source some new LED lights, which are a bit more robust, which have the same size and diameter as these, so I can reuse this bracket, or do I start again? So I was just about to order a new multifunction Speedo Taco for the Guzzi, and then I remembered, hang on a minute, I've already seen a really nice little pod that holds idiot lights, and I've used it here on my 2 litre drag bike. Now, this mount is a non-standard, that was made for the bike, as most of the bike is all one-off. But I thought, well, why not just buy one of those, they're about £30, and mount it on the bike, and I can keep all the original speedo, the mounts and so on, and it'll save me £200. So that's what I've done. I've ordered a new one of those, which is due to arrive any day now, and once that arrives, I can then get it on the bike and continue with the wiring at last. Okay, so I fitted this uh, idiot pod to the... Uh Speedo bracket gets a bit loose, but uh, yeah, it looks okay. That stands out a bit too much, it's a bit too proud, but I can also put a spacer behind it to drop it down a wee bit. And then to balance up to the side, I've moved the ignition barrel from into seat and now moved it back up onto this bracket here, which is more kind of convenient to use. It makes the wiring a bit more complicated, a bit less neat and tidy, but um, I'll sort that out another day. So here's the new wiring diagram I've been working on. It's a lot simpler, a lot more sort of easy to follow, and it consists of one page, and two pages and that's about it. Um, however, as I'm working on it, I have met a problem. And the problem is that I like things to be modular. I like to be able to unplug one area without upsetting another area. And the problem is that the main power lead, which comes from the ignition switch here, it's a brown in this case, goes through the fuse box, and then what? Well, it needs to power about eight or nine different elements of the wiring harness. And that's where I've got a problem because I can't find any particular way of doing that in a modular fashion that would mean I can unplug things and plug them back in again without upsetting everything else. Um, so that main wire has to power things like the idiot lights, the speedo, the speedo sensor, the horn, um, the indicator lights and so on, as well as the starter motor and of course the ignition coils. Now in the past when I worked on a Harley they use uh, circuit breakers with little posts so you can take a power wire onto that post and then spread it out quite easily without upsetting anything else. But on this bike, I have nothing like that. So I've been looking around for something I can buy to suit that particular purpose. And having had a good look around on Google and so on and Amazon, I actually found this little solution. And what it is, is a bladed fuse box, except it's not just a standard fuse box. It's actually a bus bar. And what that means is that you get one power line going in, which distributes itself over six different uh, terminals each of which can be fused. So I can now use this, I can put it just here, and that main ignition wire can then be split into six different fused 
circuits so that I can work on each one without upsetting anything else. So the only problem is I've got to find a home for it, which is my next problem. So I found a home for this new bus bar stroke a fuse box and unfortunately it meant that the rectifier couldn't fit anymore, there's simply no room for it, therefore this will have to go somewhere else. And as luck would have it, there's a bracket here, not being used for anything, it's got three holes in it, and I think I can use that to mount this rectifier off it, just around about there like that. And in fact that's a good place to put it because it's out there in the breeze and these things need to be kept cool, hence the filling on there. So the next step is to make a bracket to fasten this to this. And to make the bracket I've dug out some 6mm alloy plate here, which I happen to have in my scrap bin, and it's just about wide enough to hold this rectifying place, around about there. So all I've got to do now is mark it out, drill two holes in it, and then at the top here, this is where the holes will be to mount the bracket to the frame. So the next step is to drill the holes and then cut it all out and shape it. And now I'm just gonna test fit to see if that bracket fits the frame okay, which it does, except for one small problem, and that is that these bolts were just hitting the frame tubes here. So I've added some spaces at the top to move it out a wee bit. And there's one more change I want to make to this rectifier and its bracket, and then it's to paint it all black because right now it's a bit too bright a bit too in your face and it's not something you want to draw attention to and there it is all done painted satin black and the edges of the bracket have been polished and these spaces have been remade in stainless steel so i'll call that done and now it's time to move on